Now on BBC Two, we meet some very large and interesting creatures from the past in Watch. Don't worry, it's not a real dinosaur, it's a working model. Pretty realistic though, isn't it? This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which means King Tyrant Lizard, and a right tyrant he was too, because the real thing might have been twice the size of this. Have a look at its teeth. Open wide, Charles, please. Go on. <laughs> See, its teeth are long and spiky, which is just ideal for eating other animals. He had a Triceratops burger for lunch. In fact, the Tyrannosaurus rex was the biggest meat-eating land animal ever known. And uh, on the real thing, the leg might have been twice as tall as me. See? This is how big the leg would have been. And if you look at the foot, it's got three toes or claws at the front and one at the back. The Tyrannosaurus rex was big. This is the actual size his head would have been. Pretty scary, eh? But if you look at its arms... Where are your arms? Oh, you haven't got any. That's <laughs> a pretty armless dinosaur, then. <laughs> pretty armless dinosaur, I like that. This isn't armless, though. If you actually look at the arms themselves, they're quite puny. The fingers aren't very long, and the arm itself is quite short, which means that the Tyrannosaurus rex couldn't really use it to feed itself with food, because it didn't reach its mouth. Some people believe the reason that they were here was to help the Tyrannosaurus rex push himself up off the floor, because when he went to sleep, he laid on his tummy. <laughs> He's agreeing with me. Have a look at its tail. It was long. And it had to be to help balance out the weight of the dinosaur's head. Otherwise, it would have fallen over. Isn't that right, Charles? Lighting up? Yeah. These ba the batteries must have gone back then. No, not yet. This looks really interesting. Hello there. Hello. Victoria, what are you doing? We're making it the dinosaur's eye light up. Oh, I see. It looks fantastic. Vicky, can you show me how it works? OK. The switch completes the circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, the electricity in the battery flows up through the wire. It comes up to the bulb and that makes it light up. Oh, I see. That's brilliant. Let's have a look. Seeing this eye light up reminds me of a dinosaur joke. I wonder if you've heard this one. What do you call a dinosaur with its eyes closed? I don't know. I don't know. Do you think he saw us? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess what this dinosaur is called? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> it's an Apatosaurus. This is quite small because it's a baby dinosaur and it wouldn't have taken long to have grown as big as its mum up here. Now, some people call the Apatosaurus the Brontosaurus. It's a plant-eating dinosaur, and you can tell that by looking at its teeth, because they're short and stubbly. But it's got this amazingly long neck. Now, it did probably have quite a small brain. <laughs> <clears throat> can you think of a creature these days that has got a long neck? <laughs> The giraffe. It uses its long neck to reach leaves high in the trees. What else does it use?
It's long tongue. Watch how the giraffe uses its tongue to grip the leaves, almost like a special hand. This is Stegosaurus, Stegosaurus, which means plated lizard. And these are the plates. They're not the sort of things that you could eat your dinner off. But people at first thought that they were plated armour to protect the Stegosaurus and Junior from meat-eating dinosaurs. The more recently, people have wondered whether they might have been a heating or cooling device. If Sandra was cold, then they would catch the sun and heat her up. And if she was too hot, they would catch the breeze and cool her down. Nobody really knows. And, um, Sandra, you're not saying, are you? Not at all. Do you know what these elephants have in common with a Stegosaurus? Well, they have a cooling system, too. They're big ears. The ears have many blood vessels, which help the elephant to lose heat and keep cool. Standing in the shade and flapping its ears helps the cooling process too. And here's another creature you might recognise. It's a rhinoceros. This is the white rhino hunted for the horn on the end of its nose. The rhinoceros is a plant eater. After the elephant, it's the largest living land mammal. And it looks a bit like the triceratops. And triceratops means three-horned face. And there they are. One on the nose and two above the eyes. Yes, all right. I get the point. <laughs> This Triceratops is guarding her eggs and she's made a rather clever alarm because when another dinosaur comes along he thinks he can get in to take her eggs but a buzzer sounds and the Tyrannosaurus is scared off. There are some dinosaurs in the story today who are scared but not of a buzzer. They're called Longneck and Thunderfoot. Longneck the dinosaur lived alone in the forest. Apart from the birds and other small animals, Longneck seemed to have the whole world to himself. He could potter about all day, and at night he could float in the water watching the stars. One evening, Longneck heard a noise like a clap of thunder. There were sounds of splashing too, and grunts and snorts. Longneck trundled over to see what was going on. There, splashing about in the swamp, was another dinosaur. Longneck was very frightened. He had never seen another dinosaur before. <gasps> He's so big, Longneck groaned. The other dinosaur was Thunderfoot. Today, Thunderfoot had chased a butterfly far from home and every time he reached out to catch it, he missed it. And his feet banged together making a noise like a clap of thunder. Then Thunderfoot saw Longneck staring at him. Steam was coming out of Longneck's nose. He was shaking with fear and his tail was thumping on the ground. Thump de thump, thump de thump. But Thunderfoot, who had never seen another dinosaur before, thought Longneck was shaking with anger. Oh, heavens, it's a fierce monster, and he's thumping his tail at me threateningly. Oh. Now Thunderfoot began to shake with fear, and the bony scales on his back clapped and rattled together, making a terrible din. He's making that rattling din just to frighten me, Longneck thought, and his tail thumped harder than ever. Longneck and Thunderfoot began to circle round each other warily. The sun went down and the moon came out, and still the two dinosaurs were facing each other. Then it began to rain. At last, just for a moment, 
Longneck took his eyes off Thunderfoot to watch a trickle of water running down his neck. At once, Thunderfoot leapt into the air and with head down and horns pointing forward, he turned and ran away. At the same moment, Longneck lifted his tail and holding it high above his head, ran in the opposite direction. Later that night, Longneck was trying to sleep, sitting up under a tree. Far away, Thunderfoot was hiding under the water. Each of them made a crafty plan. Next day, Thunderfoot was digging a deep pit. He was pleased with his crafty plan. When he had finished digging, Thunderfoot waited for Longneck to come along. <laughs> He'll fall in and never be able to get out. <laughs> At the same time, Longneck hid in a tree with his tail trailing across the path below. He'll trip over it, and then I'll give him a good swipe and get away quickly. He was pleased with his crafty plan, too. Unfortunately, Thunderfoot didn't trip over Longneck's tail. He sat on it instead, and this was very painful for Longneck. He was trying hard not to howl with agony, when suddenly the branch on which he was lying gave up trying to carry 20 tons of dinosaur. The forest echoed and rumbled, and the whole world shook as they rolled down the hill. Then, at last, everything quietened down again. The only noises now were a kind of rattling din and a thump, thump, thump coming from Thunderfoot's deep pit. It was a long time before Longneck heard Thunderfoot speak. Are you going to eat me? Thunderfoot asked. Uh, I'm much too uh, frightened to eat anything right now. Uh, Longneck replied wheezily. Anyway, I'm a vegetarian. Both dinosaurs were thinking hard now. It's not me you're frightened of. Is it? Thunderfoot asked at last. Of course it is, sighed Longneck. Are you frightened of me, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> very. Longneck's tail began to thump more slowly, and Thunderfoot rattled only now and then, and at last stopped altogether. And then they both had the same lovely, crafty idea. So it happened that not long after, on a clear starry night, the forest echoed with a loud rattling noise and the heavy thumpity dump dumping of a long tail beating out a rhythm on the ground. Somewhere in the forest, Longneck and Thunderfoot were giving a party and the birds and all the other animals of the forest had come out to sing and dance together to the beautiful music of the big, friendly dinosaurs. Mm -hmm.